performance, incredible way over here. Ride comfort, way over here. It covers the gambit. Hey crew, I've got the key to, one sec, let me just turn this around right here and my, my 23 Cadillac CT5V Blackwing Anniversary Edition. I cannot believe I get to say that, but I'm saying it. And we are going to take it for a drive, and it will be a true and proper first drive. The car has 31 miles on the odometer, which just came from me taking it home from the dealership and then promptly taking it to Dynamic Auto Customs to do the full front end PPF and ceramic coating of the car. It then rained for two weeks, so I couldn't even take it out. You're joining me on my first drive, my first pleasurable drive in my brand new Blackwing. But before we get into that, let's talk about how I ended up specking my car because a couple things have changed from when I made the, I'm getting a Blackwing video like five and a half months ago. One thing that clearly hasn't changed is the electric blue paint job. When I first saw this paint color on this car at the first drive event like a year ago, I fell hard for it. And I know it's not a completely original color for the Blackwing, BMW has a similar color for the M5, Porsche has a similar color, the shark blue for the 911 GT3, but those colors are not on my car. So this is the color on my car and I love it so, so much. One other thing that hasn't changed is that I stuck with the satin graphite wheels. I debated the bronze tech, but then thought that might be a little too much Subaru WRXE with the blue paint job. So I stuck with these wheels. One thing that has changed is that originally I was just getting the carbon fiber one package that included the front splitter and the rear spoiler, but I then added the carbon fiber two package just to distinguish the car a little bit more from other CT5s. And that means you get this grill insert in carbon fiber, these wheel deflectors, rocker panels, and diffuser all in carbon fiber. Now I will make a video about things I like and dislike about the car, but one thing that just jumped out at me to me immediately is that all that carbon fiber and you don't get carbon fiber door mirrors. You get those in the M3 competition, but not in this car that costs even more money. And originally I had them in the same electric blue color as the car. I ended up going with black because I wanted them to fade in a little more. I'm glad I did that, but I wish they were in carbon fiber. One other thing that changed, originally I had the bronze calipers for my carbon ceramic brakes, and it did stick with carbon ceramic brakes, but I ended up choosing red for two reasons. One, I really liked the color, thought it went well with the blue, didn't want to get too crazy with all the different colors of the car, and two, and this is a little more petty, I wanted my key to be red capped, and the key color matches the brake caliper color. So that's why they're red. And I think that sticking with black, blue, and red, those three colors for the car instead of bringing in bronze is, uh, is a better look here. So that's my spec of the exterior. We'll get into the interior in just a sec, but first I wanna jump over and talk about why I did a PPF of the front end and a full ceramic coating of the car in addition to tinting of these windows with ceramic tint. All right, crew, so we're here at Dynamic Auto Customs. They just finished up with my CT5V Blackwing. And look at this thing. It is stunning. The ceramic coating just makes it pop so much more. And this is after the sun has gone down. I can't wait to see it on a bright, clear day. But I wanna bring in Brian here to just help answer some questions for me. I'm curious, okay, I knew that ceramic coating and that PPF were necessary for preserving my car, but why? Um, I mean, the main, the Lumar Platinum pretty much obviously has self-healing effects. That's the main goal for that. Like, let's say an impact were to hit it over time with enough heat in the summertime, or you can even be at home with a hair dryer. Enough heat over time, it will self-heal it um, little by little. Same thing with the ceramic coating. We also went ahead and applied ceramic coating on the full body of the vehicle. 
And I also did the ceramic tinting. And why is ceramic tinting better than standard tinting? So ceramic tint, pretty much what the, obviously again, Lumar is the main good thing here. So Lumar uh, CTX package has 99% UV protection. It has 68% heat rejection. He particularly went with 35% uh, on the four doors and back with the 50% on the front windshield. DEC really took good care of my car and I feel so much more secure driving it around now, not worrying nearly as much about rock chips and scratches and not having the awful fishbowl effect to my windows. So now we can look in the interior where I did make another big change compared to my build video. Instead of going with a sky cool gray color for the seats, I went with jet black and that is once again, worrying about having too many different colors going on. I had gray, I had blue, I had bronze, I had black, I had red. That was way too many. So now we're just those three, blue, red, and black. And I stuck with a semi-aniline leather because it feels so very good. And it gives me the carbon backed bucket seats up front. And also I'm not too worried about the black because we still have like touches of color with the white and the contrast stitching and the red. And I also added the torch red seat belts for a little extra pizzazz. And yes, I didn't get the two sunroofs because I wanted extra headroom up front and it was a noticeable difference, but that does mean that the cabin is a little bit darker. I'll deal with it. Gloss carbon fibers here on the door panels. That's for all black wings. The suede wrapping on the door panel is with the semi-aniline leather and it does have contrast stitching. You get an AKG 16 speaker sound system, which is a very good quality sound system. Sitting behind my own seat at six feet tall, I've got lots of leg room. The foot pockets are on the narrower side. Thigh support is kind of just okay. The headroom is the real issue back here though. So if I'm sitting upright, I can't even make it back to that headrest. So I have to kind of slouch. This is not gonna be great for taller adults. And furthermore, I mean, it is nice with the suede wrapping, right? That's cool. But furthermore, the amenities back here are pretty weak. We've got air vents, we've got one USB-C port and a DC outlet. No rear seat heating, no third zone of climate. Just kind of a bummer. The drive shaft dump is big. That's not the real issue though because the seat is raised up in the middle. So headroom's even worse. So I would just say two adults and probably not huge ones. You have two cup holders and you've got leather padding in the armrest, but I want, I want more back here. I really do. Let's check out the front. Let's listen for the door close noise next. And that is a thud I am so happy to hear. It speaks to some build quality for my car. Smart keel entry is for the front two doors. And this is important because up until this moment, apart from me telling you, you would have had no indicator based on the exterior or the back seats that this is one of the 120 anniversary edition cars. But now that you open the front door, you're gonna see this collector series plaque down here. You'll see these special illuminated tread plates and this unique 3D printed medallion on the shifter that's only if you get the six speed manual. If you go with the automatic, you don't get that. And that tells you that it's a limited production car. They assign you one of the 120 years of Cadillac. You can pay more to choose a year, but I didn't care. So they gave me 2010, which means nothing to me, but yeah, there you go. If we look in the trunk, hit that button, and it does come all the way up. I'm glad to see that. We'll see 12 cubic feet of space. It's not cavernous. If I want more room, then there are no levers to pull to release the seats from back here. I've got to go into the back seats, pull on the latches, and then fold them down 60-40. And it's just a cutout. It's not a full pass-through. Under the floor are some tire-changing tools, and it's not a power-operated trunk lid here on the manual car. So you got to pull that pretty hard. The rattle is just my license plate cover. Don't worry about that. The front doors, just like the back, we've got leather up top, and then two positions of memory for the front seats, four one-touch windows, power adjusting and power folding door mirrors. And the front seats do look pretty cool. I love this accent stitching here up by the shoulder blades. The seats are heated and ventilated up front. You've got pass-throughs for your raising harness. You get a lumbar massage and aluminum accents on the foot pedal with the branded floor mats. There's already some wear on the side bolster. That's interesting. And they're power adjusting side bolsters. Okay, so with the vehicle in accessory mode, I can one, show you I do in fact have 31 miles on the odometer. The gauge cluster and infotainment system are on. It's a 10 inch screen. It's not terribly well integrated with the dashboard. And I do hear for 24 that they're making a uniform housing for infotainment and gauge cluster like in the new M3, like in the Cadillac Escalade. And that'll be a nice upgrade that my car won't get. 
It's okay, because the infotainment system is really responsive, the graphics are sharp, it's easy to use, it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I love to see when you get a standard wireless smartphone charging pad like in the Blackwing. Physical HVAC controls are here, physical volume knob and tuner, so everything is just logical and you won't have to take your eyes off the road to use it. I went with the suede wrapping of the gear selector and shift boot, in addition to suede wrapping for the steering wheel, because just wanted more racy feeling touches and it does feel great in the hands the thickness of the wheel the red center marker is standard on all black wings as is the v button and performance traction management system gloss carbon fiber here at the bottom spoke of the wheel with as i mentioned your serialized number plate there's a standard head-up display with stitched leather up on the dashboard more gloss carbon fiber over here and all around the center console and I really love that GM held back from using gloss black. It's here on this part of the seat, and that's about it. Which means that I'm just not gonna have all these materials that are going to age very poorly. I will take excellent care of this, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm just, I'm so pleased with GM. Thank you for doing that. There's a key slot here. I went with the digital rear view mirror, which won't turn on unless the vehicle is fully on, for one important reason, and that is that I'm going to have car seats for my two kiddos and I wanted to be able to see through those. It's not like the natural visibility is all that bad. The C pillar is a bit of a blind spot. There's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic though. I just, I wanted that nice feature. And the front of this Blackwing cabin is way more special feeling than the back seats and this is where I'm spending all my time. So this is what matters to me. And I'm excited, I'm ready. Let's take my Blackwing anniversary edition for a first drive. All right, let's fire it up. <laughs> That's a good noise. That's a very good noise. Uh, is it as amazing as the same engine in the Escalade V? No, it doesn't make me a little upset that that vehicle also makes a little more power. Yes. But it's still awesome. It's still an amazing cold start in the Blackwing. Our drive mode selected here, and we're just going to stay in tour. With so few miles on the odometer and the break-in period it lasting at least the first 500 miles, I'm not even going to approach red line today. This first drive is just to get familiar with the vehicle and to kind of shed a little light on why I chose it. As we go into reverse, which is all the way over and up, that brings up a super high resolution backup camera. I love the camera system in GM products. And we've got so many different angles to choose from, including wheel shots, which is super helpful when parking, not wanting to scratch up those rims. We've got the digital rear view mirror going now. And away we go. It sends us a pedestrian who is a ghost, apparently. We'll start with the turning radius test. And I'll bring up the camera system once more. Gosh, not a great turning radius. I forgot how wide it is in the black wing. Turn signal sound. Thankfully, not irritating at all. World famous horn test. Oh, I barely touched it. I didn't even know I pressed on it. Wow, and the, the horn sound is fine. I'm good with that horn sound. I'm shocked at just how sensitive that horn is. Hovered over the airbag cover and, uh, and it wanted to alert people to its presence. So, let's talk about this engine. 6.2 liter supercharged V8. It makes 668 horsepower and 659 pound-feet of torque. It is routed through your choice of the six-speed manual, though to me, there is no choice, or you get the 10-speed automatic. There's no choice to me because I chose this vehicle 
for the very particular combination of V8, manual transmission, rear wheel drive. There was never going to be a situation in which I would have chosen the Blackwing with the automatic. Even though it's a fine transmission, I have no qualms with it, it was not going to be the right partner for me in this car. You cannot buy another manual V8 rear drive muscle vehicle right now and they're probably never going to make another of them so this was a special recipe for me the brake pedal well calibrated it's easy to modulate this Tremec 6 speed is such a great gearbox the throws are short and notchy The path of the gear lever is so well defined, the gates are clear. The clutch engagement point is distinctive. The throttle response in tour. Is mild. and I'm really just breezing on the throttle. But it's easy to work it without overwhelming yourself with all the power. And the ride quality. This is another feature of the Blackwing that sold me on the car. These magnetic ride control adaptive dampers are sensational at filtering out road blemishes, keeping you so comfortable. It's that perfect other side of the spectrum to this car's performance. Performance, incredible way over here. Ride comfort, way over here. It covers the gambit. And the seats, which you can actuate in a variety of different ways, including the side bolsters and the lower bolsters. 18-way power adjustable. You find the perfect driving position for you. I found that for me, and I feel great. And as the speeds build, tire noise becomes a little more of a factor. Wind noise, not really an issue. The cabin is quiet, the ride is composed. I love the daily driving of the Blackwing. And when choosing my preferred mode of transportation, when not reviewing press vehicles, this was the ultimate recipe. I wanted something that was not going to punish me. That still had all of the excitement that I wanted at a moment's notice, but was packaged within something that just as easily treated you like a civilized human being and could carry four people. I needed my kids to come along with me. My wife can drive manual. So this was, it was really the only option for me. It was the only car I wanted desperately enough to spend serious coin on. This is my first brand new car I've ever bought in my entire life. For it to be a Blackwing blows my own mind, but that says something about how significant this vehicle was for me. All of the cars I review, and I kept coming back to not just how invigorating the drive of the Blackwing was when you were on it and you're hearing that V8, and you're not lifting for the shifts, and the superchargers there, and the overrun, and the way it handled, not just those things, but also how agreeable it is 
day in and day out. Other vehicles I considered, you saw me make a video about it, the Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat, red eye wide body. I thought about it, it was less expensive, but you saw way too many of them on the road for me. And some of those were just Charger Scat Packs, some of those were Hellcats, some of those were Hellcat Red Eye Wide Bodies, some of those were Jailbreak Wide Bodies. I mean, there were just too many of them out on the road. And the interior just didn't feel like it was worth the money. I thought about the M5 briefly, but ultimately decided it was too big of a vehicle, and it started at $117,000 so for the competition model, and so it just quickly got out of hand price-wise. I also thought about the M3 competition, like for a very, very long time. But the reason I didn't go with that car ultimately was, one, the face. And I know they have aftermarket things you can do to make it look better. But two, the manual in the M3 was pretty rubbery and, and not engaging and and just the ability to have a manual isn't enough to sell me it's got to be a good gearbox and when you climb behind the wheel of the black wing and you drive the tremec and you're like okay this is a very well thought out six speed with rear drive with the v8 it, it just it was not something that i could argue around it had to be the black wing and I do ultimately think this vehicle is going to go up in value. I plan on holding out to it for a very long time. And though that wasn't really the primary concern, I wanted to buy something that I just loved. That was another thing that helped me justify the exorbitant price tag. And all that to say, I can't wait to bring you more content in my Blackwing. And I have a couple ideas in mind for doing that. And I'm going to vet them with you right now. The one primary idea I had was to make an interview show in the cabin of this car. And it would be a little different in that I wanted to have the POV perspective integrated into this interview process. So I'll have a secondary camera facing my guest and myself along with my POV perspective. And I'll switch back and forth between those two camera angles. And we'll just have a riff. We'll talk about how my guest got into doing what they're doing, maybe some advice they have for people who want to do something similar. We'll talk about the car a little bit. We'll do some fun driving. We'll do some no lift shifting. We'll have a great time, but I just wanted to have a little extra flavor to the channel and something different than my normal drives while bringing in some automotive personalities that I very much admire. And that interview idea will be in addition to videos I make about my ownership experience, things I like and don't like about the car, as someone who's been in it more than just a week like I am typically in my review vehicles. So I'm curious what you guys think about the interview show idea. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about my Blackwing. Did I make a mistake in terms of my specification? I just realized this plastic cover is still in. That's why it's so reflective. Did I make a mistake in how I spec the vehicle? Would you have done something different? Would you have chosen a different car? Would you have gotten the Charger Hellcat Red Eye wide body? Would you have gotten the M3? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the Blackwing content I have planned. Hit that bell to get notified, and I'll see you again next time.